Hi everybody, it's Mary Jo. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the reading for our new moon in Taurus, May 15, 2018. Taurus is an earth sign and it is a fixed sign. Alrighty, and it is a sign that talks about earthly or material things, things of the third dimensional reality. We know with our new moon, um, we want to plant seeds and things that we desire. So we want to plant things on an earthly uh, element that is about finances because Taurus rules finances. It's about your physical body. It is about all the things you could buy with money, things that's your core value system, your self-esteem. Venus rules Taurus. Of course, it could be also about love. So what are we planting the seeds of? Um, right now with the moon being um, in this phase of like a dark phase, even though the moon has no light of its own, it reflects the sun's light. Here, the sun and the moon are on opposite sides of the earth, so you don't see the moon's reflection. It's, it's that time you go into the depth of yourself. Uh, and especially with Taurus, the core values, you're going to really start reflecting about yourself. You're going to look at the things about yourself, maybe that you don't like that you want to change. Maybe a lot of us will start with a new diet plan or exercise regimen. Uh, very Ven Ven Venetian is um, changing your face, the way you put your face forward. Maybe you're going to change your hair color or cut or style, new makeup, uh, get a new piercing, you know, or a tattoo. Very, very much about Venus beautifying the body, showing love to yourself and your self-esteem. It's very important. Um, remembering that the sun is your ego, it's the conscious mind, and the moon is your id, your subconscious mind, your instinctive, uncivilized and primitive, animalistic part of you. Um, that's what we find maybe a little disturbing about ourselves. Fetishes, jealousy, hatred, um, even brooding or fear, fantasies, you might deny it. You know, it could be very reactive for you instead of responsive. You know, you might just do things before you think about it. So be aware of that too, especially things that are emotionally stimulating you right now because you're remembering that um, the emotion, it, it rules the five senses, okay? Those, those pleasures that you feel and those emotions that you feel. Um, depending on where the moon is in your chart and your horoscope is where it is going to be affected in what house. And it is a very important and second important luminary to the sun or your ascendant. It's a very strong uh, placement in your chart. So when we look at this right now, let's think about planting the seeds of the things we desire to manifest in our life on this new moon that are about our finances, stability, growth, healing, our body, relationships, love. Okay, bring restorative balance into all of those things. I'm sorry, Mickey's having a little sneezing thing in the background. But it's also a good time to plant flowers and vegetables that are above ground. Um, and uh, definitely don't do anything different to your hair. You know, I was just going to say, don't get that tattoo or piercing or haircut on the new moon though, okay? Because it's a critical phase for your body, especially in Taurus, it's, it's the body. Do not do it. You know, wait, uh, do it a couple of days before or after. Like within that four-day frame, just do it before or after, not exactly on it. Because we do want to respect the body, give it some downtime and rest, okay? So with that being said, I'm using our Nature's Whispers Oracle Cards. I like to do that with the major astrological events and whatnot. But here we go, we're looking at what spirit um, is saying here, what, what is it that we want right now? We have maintain your childlike spirit, number 27, so that's a nine. Things that are ending, it's a spiritual number, things that culminate. And we look at here, beautiful muted shades here, but you know, she's swinging here, not a care in the world, head thrust back, just going with the wind, letting it push her and pull her. Looks like spirits there in the background there, enlightenment. And it's almost even like above like her third eye here, even if it's like a visionary manifestation. And always do look at the cards if there's anything else that you're seeing. Like you see here, this other spiritual energy we have in the earth. I love that. We seem to have like different energies going on, like winter, autumn there. Yet there's life in the branches that you swing, like evergreen, okay? And 
snowflake. So we're each individual as a snowflake. So this will pertain to each and every one of us. The flame of her wings to me is definitely about spirit and, and inspiration, as is this here energy, empowerment. Evergreen, that's the life energy force that always is. Energy is always in flux. So what are we talking about right now? That we want to plant the seeds of in our life. So let's look what the Oracle book says. To maintain your childlike spirit, nature holds all aspects of light. The light is the same brilliant light that shines out of every child while they are still in touch with the magic of the world and nature. Find the innocence of your childhood light within you and reconnect with it. This light represents your virtue and holds the memory of perfect trust, fearlessness in others, and total self-reliance. It will allow you to see the world with the eyes of a child. You will be excited to learn new things every day. How much happier our world would be if everyone reconnected to his or her purest essence. So that's what you are looking to do. You are looking to reconnect with that pure form, that fearlessness. Remember as a child, nothing was impossible. Sure, we had certain fears of things, but we learned to grow out of them unless they were something that was a real issue, you know, like you knew a needle was going to sting you when you got the needle, but you learned to deal with it, you know, when you went to the doctors or the dentist. But here we want to get back to that. This is very important for us on the new moon. What is it that you're looking for? To trust and be fearless and knowing that anything and everything is possible. Then here, what are you going to do to get it? Keep your dreams alive, 25, 2 and 5, that's 7. That's an enlightening number, all right, like a lightning bolt. And she's, you see like she's making her wish, like she's blowing it out to the universe. You know, and she always has the imagery of dandelions in here with Josephine Walsh, this beautiful imagery. And again, we have all four seasons, but we have earthly realms and other worldly realms all around us. That goes to show you the infinite possibilities, whatever you can dream of or think of or believe. And here we have this crescent moon right where her third eye would be. That blue there is very much about knowledge. There is a blending of the universe all around her. She's blowing her wishes out because your wishes don't have to be limited to earth or to form. Your wishes are universal and can go out to boundaries that you don't even realize. So in order to get this, it's talking about keeping your dreams alive. Start to identify plans and actions that will lead you to achieve your dreams and goals. Your dreams can become your reality. This is a time when you need to be able to apply detailed planning in order to manifest your dreams and realize your goals. You need to remain focused on the practical side of things. Very, very Taurin practicality. Keep your feet firmly planted on the ground. Again, an earth energy, Taurus energy, like a bull in a paddock, right? It is easy to be distracted by more ideas and concepts. Keep focused on what is realistic and achievable. Your common sense and pragmatic approach will lead you to a solution that actually works. Begin taking steps that will bring you closer to your dreams. That's very good advice is what we need to do. Being realistic. You know, sure, you might say, I want to win the lottery. You know, I want to be a millionaire. Uh, that's very much like the Taurus energy finances. I want to be very comfortable in my life. Might be another way. I might want to retire and have enough money to live and travel and do what I want. Um, be realistic and pragmatic. Sure, the universe can provide you with anything you want. It's a dot in, in the size and, and order of the universe. But being practical and pragmatic, you know, you start with like ordering the you know, a burger and you go to the drive through and say, I wish I'd get some fries with that. And you get a free order of fries with that. You know, things like that. Start in a practical sense. Start at the beginning to tr trust yourself and build from there. So plant the seeds of things that you feel are truly attainable so you don't let yourself down if you don't achieve them and you blame yourself you shoulda, coulda, woulda. Because it's not always that it's the universe disappointing you. It's that you and I get distracted by life. And we don't sit there and concentrate on the things we desire, even in our daily work, our routine with our families, friends, loved ones, or whatever we're doing. 
we focus on negative things instead of focus on joy and bliss and happiness. And when we resonate with that joy, bliss and happiness and all the things that we want and desire come to us. But when we sit there and worry, doubt, anxiety, fear, um, that energy resonates in a boo, 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 lower frequency. And so now we're not aligned with that which we desire. Okay, so what's blocking us now? We have inner truth number 16, another seven vibration. Something is enlightening us. Now you see here many choices going on. Again, otherworldly realms, not limited to our earth, not limited to form, all possibilities. And that light is all that this person has to guide them. But it's kind of like your inner light. It's all you really need to trust is your inner light to show you which path. And any and all paths are possible. Any and all realities are attainable, but it's up to you. So how, how do we get to these things? We look at what is it that's blocking us from achieving these things. We're going to tell you it again. It's that negativity, that doubt, that fear, um, the lack of value that you have for yourself. You know, we're very good at putting ourselves down. Even people that say um, they are deserving of it, they're the best of it, and how come I don't have it because everybody else has it, I deserve it too, they're not better than me. Well, I got to tell you, that in itself is negative talk and negative energy, and that is very much blocking things from coming to you. When you can look at another's successes, joys, and happiness, things that you wish for in your life or that are similar to what you want, and you send that love and blessings to them and joy and like, wow, I really, I'm so happy for them. That would be something I wish I had. You change the frequency and vibration to bring it to you. The inner truth could be that it's your darkness. And once you learn to face and embrace that darker side of you, instead of feeling guilty or dirty about it, that it is a part of you, but it doesn't rule your life, you'll be able to find that balance and come to terms with things. And, and an energy of manifestation, knowing when to focus on the light and when to be distracted by the shadow side of yourself. And I, I know it doesn't make sense to you, but I'll get back to that in a minute. So they're saying there's a lot of depth to your feelings. You are on your way to understanding your feelings and desires more clearly. The next steps on your path will soon reveal themselves. Stay vigilant to new opportunities that may lead to the beginnings of novel projects or assist you with current ventures. Look around you and within you. Be willing to do the work at the deepest level as you will find jewels of wisdom, knowledge, and the inner voice of waiting, all waiting patiently, excuse me, to assist you. Nature's crystals are created deep within the earth. Go deep and find your own treasures. Very new moon energy is going to do the inner work, the depth of ourselves. Like I said, that shadow sign. And with this Taurus energy of the earth, it's very, very depictive of going to the depths of your physical body, your, your spiritual side. And when I look at the darkness and the light, there has to be both in the universe to find balance in between is is the thing that's tricky for us. Many artists of all kinds go to that shadow side to find the depths of themselves, where their pain is, where their suffering is, where their fear is, to create this beautiful piece of music or poetry or art or dance or form of expression. It's the same thing here with the new moon. Find the depths of yourself that are the shadow side, the things that are your fears, jealousies, things you don't like about yourself and guilt, and just say, this is a part of who I am, but it doesn't define me, but it is there as a part of me, all right? And trusting, even sometimes those energies can help you out of a bad situation because sometimes you need to tap into that, you know, anger that you have or pain that you have to help you to deal with a situation. Now, two cards flew out when I was going for the last one. What, what advice from spirit? And we have 35, which is an 8, and 11. Now, um, the 35, which is an 8, culmination of vision, and uh, number 11 is a master number, make a decision. So the 8 is truly form and manifesting things in our life. As above, so below. That lemnus get energy. And 11, the master number of intuition, okay? Trusting your inner divination. And it does reduce to a two, which is about partnership or love. So for some of you, this can resonate with making um, a choice between two lovers, um, 
culminating the vision, seeing things as they are, maybe having a baby, buying that house. See, partnership doesn't have to be just another person. Since it is with Taurus, it could be anything in matter, any material thing, physical thing, third dimensional thing. So yeah, here she's looking at the butterflies, okay, which we know there's new beginnings, but there's transformation here. And these people are looking at it. She's the one with the earth and the spirit of the tree here, looking out at all possibilities. That's what she's focused on. Let's see what it's talking about here. It's saying it's time to take positive action toward your goals and dreams. Be adaptable and fine tune any of the details of what you are creating. Reflect on your desires and make sure the attitudes and beliefs are in alignment with what you wish to accomplish. Let go of any aspect or equality that no longer fits what you intend to accomplish. That's what we were talking about. Focusing your energy on positive thoughts and things, even if it's other people's things that you want and you crave and desire, which is the polarity of Taurus. Scorpio is about desires, power. It's that darkness, Scorpio, that stinger, you know, the secrets, the occult, things that are hidden. So you could tap into the depth of your soul here and what is it that you really want to bring into form and go into that space of desire to manifest. But again, raising your vibration, okay, in order to be aligned with that which you desire, being in a form of jealousy or Anger or hostility is not going to bring it to you. And then with make a decision, this again, we have, we have so much different energy here. You know, here we have this goddess energy with her wings gold, alchemical process to me, spiritual, very spiritual. And then here you have like this mask down here if it's ancient Aztec or pre-Columbian, um, Incan, and so it's ancient societies and ways. When the earth was new, when it was in touch with magic and godlike energy, purity, you know, all matters of beings around us, we were in oneness with it. We understood our place in the universe and what we were here for and to do. And I love that we have this crescent moon here. We have it marked on the forehead of this girl here and even in that other imagery. So it's saying that your sheer determination right now is highlighted at this time. Your spirit will support your desires and manifestations. The ability to create or destroy has always been within your skill base. You have the wisdom and confidence needed to use these skills constructively. Now is the time to act if you know what it is that you want to accomplish and why. Since the powers of transformation are at your command, change your desires into objectives, your thoughts into actions, and your goals into achievements. If you have recently met with failure, know that change that failure into success is possible. The only limits you have are those you impose on yourself. So here it is trusting in that spiritual number, that 11, the first of the master numbers, trusting your inner divination, trusting that you are God like God loves you perfectly the way you are. If there are things that don't go well in your life and you feel like you failed, just know that it was a growth edge. Now, yes, it may have been something that wasn't in the best timing for you or the best opportunity. Like I had started a candle and soap business in 2006. And I did pretty well and then the crash came and just I stopped doing it about a year ago, but it was a passion of mine to create all these natural organic soaps and candles. And I felt like I was a failure, but I did it to help support my children and I, and it just maybe wasn't the right timing or it wasn't the highest and best purpose for me at that time. You know, it was an enjoyable time in my life and a hobby. But when I see other people successful in it and I say, why didn't it work out for me? And I had to let go of those feelings of jealousy or inadequacy. But I look at them in, in me and like, why is this here? What is it triggering? Because I felt like a failure, like I wasn't good enough, but theirs, theirs succeeded. Why? Mine was just as good, if not better. You know, it, it, these things I had to look at and I, I came to peace with knowing it was only there at that time to serve its purpose in my life. So whatever knowledge, evolution, growth that I needed or to even show my children that I would survive through hard work and dedication. I was working three jobs at the time. 
but it was there for what I needed as a distraction in my life at the time to get me through where I was. And because of it, I am here where I am right now. I don't regret any of those things. They, they are just a part of the path that I was on. So I could take all of those past experiences that I've had that helped shape me but don't define me along the way and know that I did my best. I achieved what was meant for me to achieve at the time, but something better this way comes for me. So I hope this does help you on this beautiful new moon energy. Be outside, you know, earth, nature, put your feet in the grass, the dirt, the sand. If you're in an apartment and you can't, you know, rub your feet into your carpet or some towels and you know, keep some crystals around you or whatever symbolizes earth to you, be in the mountains, okay? And always give thanks for everything you've achieved from the last new moon in Taurus to now. And I don't like the word failure. Let's just say that they are things that we experienced in life that were a stepping stone towards the height of the mountain, the apex that we will achieve. Thanks again for watching and please remember to subscribe and to share. Thank you for liking and I'm available for readings. The information is below. Have a great new moon and as always I wish you the best.